again with another EEAP safety presentation. Again, I am Rick Roman. My name is Michael Crawley. And today we are talking about general OSHA compliance and that uh, OSHA is not your father's safety program. That is a great title, Rick. I love the old guy with the bale of hay, Rick. I, I find that to be absolutely ridiculous. Well, you know, today you have a lot of different things going on with safety, and uh, sometimes people just aren't aware of some of the changes that have taken place, and, and things just aren't what they used to be. No, that is true, Rick. That is true. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, um, if you have questions, you do not need to wait to the end. You can go ahead and uh, put them in the chat, and we'll address those to the end of the presentation. Please do. Please do. Oh my. Okay, so we're going to be going over a brief history of OSHA and Cal OSHA and what Cal OSHA expects of every business, the difference between being safe and being compliant, and how to avoid costly citations. Thank you for changing that slide, Rick. That picture was getting hard to be looked at. So, yes. <laughs> so in the 1960s, uh, the U.S. had 1.4 million work-related deaths. That is amazing. In one year, that is really actually quite well, amazing. Yeah, actually, that, that was over a decade, but yeah, that, that was still, that's quite a oh, large yes. number. So, uh, you know, um, so as a result, in 1970, President Nixon signed the Occupational Safety and Health Act. Uh, three years after that, California expanded the regulation and created Cal OSHA. I, I, I think this is quite amazing. I mean, when you look at just the, the two pictures here and talking about the, the creation of Cal OSHA and Cal OSHA taking the initiative to be one of the first states that made their own OSHA program, it, it really is just amazing of what they've done. From the workers sitting on the beam uh, without anything, lighting up a cigarette, uh, having lunch, to now when these guys are fully harnessed up, hard hats, everything, jackets, colors. I mean, it really is just amazing of what's taken place and hopefully we're we're not what there's not as many work-related deaths a year I would hope for wouldn't you say Rick yes we, we've definitely dropped the number significantly so you can see why it was important that that something had to be done uh, you had a lot of issues with illnesses people breathing uh, cotton dust in the mills and so forth and so obviously somehow something had to be done to stem that problem well, here we go. Cal OSHA and where we're at today. History up. Here we go, Rick. Go to the next one if you don't mind. So, we're going to talk here about what Cal OSHA expects from every business. And, and this is straight off of their, their site, that every employer shall establish, implement, and maintain an effective injury and illness prevention program. And we're going to go over the elements of of what it is that they require from you. So it's important for me to come in and to tell you that you already have these in your client center. It's very important you know that one through nine is already there for you in your client center. Now most of you have more than nine programs there, but these are the basic nine ones that you have. Heat illness has been huge over the last few years, but the really ones that you need to pay attention to, well, I say that, but obviously you need to pay attention to all nine. But you need to understand what the action investigation program is, filling out the 5020 form that is located on your client center. Uh, you also need to be able to make sure you understand the energy control lockout tagout program and, and make sure that you have those things locked out. If you do not know, if you, you're you unsure about if you need to lock out something, you can ask Sam, our general manager, or your inspector or trainer, and they'll be able to get you the answer while you're out there. That, that's going to be very, very simple. But when it comes to the rest of this, it's all on your, your client login center that we've shown you before, your eeap.com client center. And if you don't have the username and password, you can just uh, call the office, right, Rick? Absolutely. And now these nine programs are programs that are required for every business. As Michael says, there are several other programs pertaining to different businesses. So depending on what it is that you do, there would be additional programs. But everybody is required to have these nine programs. And when he says everybody, I want to make sure we get specifically about what that means. When he says everybody, every manufacturer, construction site, uh, accountant, 
every gas station, every business. So every business in the state of California, for the most part, is going to have some sort of energy controlled lockout tag out. And you could say, Mike, how detailed does that get? And we're going to go over that a little later about how detailed that get. Is that correct, Rick? Yes, we'll talk a little bit but more. But more importantly, this. just know that if you are a business in California and you don't have programs one through nine, you are not in compliance. The great news is, as clients of ours, you are in compliance. It's probably your neighbors that aren't, and that's the unfortunate part. Okay, so the, so the next element that, that uh, you have to do is, so now you have the documentation in place, you, you need to be doing training. So you need to be making sure that your employees are trained on what's in your documentation. So if you guys are really good, you've elected to do our monthly safety plan and we're coming out monthly to do the training. And that is wonderful. We're doing the big lessons, we're doing the, the good topics, the, 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 the broad topics that we can do for you. But there's a lot of training that needs to be done. This is why we build the client center. We built the client center so that you have a list of all of the lessons under the lessons to the safety lessons tab, isn't it, Rick? The safety lessons tab under the client center. And you'll be able to go there and not just select the lessons that you want to do, but also what this is going to do is this will make it so that you can suggest new lessons that you need. So if you guys are using a table saw and you have a small group of guys out there that have table saws, yes, you have to provide a small bit of training on that. Does it have to go an hour? No. But getting them to read the lesson with them, taking five, ten minutes to go over that small lesson with them and then having them sign off on it is, is the appropriate appropriate thing. Right. And and in that our client center, you'll see that there, there's a, around 300 topics. So obviously, uh, you're not able to do training with all of those topics over a course of a year with all of your employees. So some of those will be just specific topics that you might be doing with your individual people. Now, logistically, uh, my office manager, Lori McFade, is probably going to kill me for saying this. But let me just say that we are developing a, a mobile training website for your smartphone. So it's a mobile website. So if you open it up on your smartphones, an Apple or or the Samsungs or whatever version you have, you'll be able to do these safety lessons like a, like a small tailgate lesson, if you will, or just in a factory, if it's not considered a tailgate lesson, you'll be able to do this training and then have them sign a signature page on your smartphone, which will be saved on your client center. We're looking at about three months down the road that we should be able to get this up, locked and, and loaded. We're on the tail end of it. But to be able to help you with your training so that you can take a small group of people out there and have management or somebody out there do a small easy training to fulfill some of these deeper laws, you should be able to pull out your smartphone, read the lesson to them, and then have a little signature page there to finish that up. And so that will be coming at no additional cost. Is that correct, Rick? That's correct. No additional cost to you as a client of EEAP, but the training really going forward in 2000. 15 and 16, we're anticipating the training elements needing to be stronger within Cal OSHA, and this is why we're developing that. Okay, so the next element would be communication. So here we're talking about uh, things that communicate to your employees, any types of hazards, postings, um, signage, uh, any other things you might elaborate on that? No, you, you hit it. It's the, it's the communication. And, and without doing regular training, obviously, you don't have the communication. But communication, like you said, the Fed and State posters, the signage. And let me go back to the client login center again. You, you can get the the, the uh, username and password from our office. You can just call the office and ask for it. And any one of my employees here will be able to tell you what your username and password is. But on the client login center, the tab that is furthest to the right on the second row is a thing about safety posters. And we're, we're, we're letting you download these safety posters for free so you can help with the communication of your business. The new, uh, I'm gonna, the acronym fails to come to my mind right now, Rick. It is the acronym of the new MSDS sheets. Oh, the SDSs? Thank you. The new SDS sheets, new pictograms, all that. Heat illness uh, posters that we have, hydration posters backs and lifting safety posters. We put together a series of posters that were given away for free in the format of 11, eight and a half by 11. And so you can get those in any time. Okay, and then the, the, the next thing is, is that you obviously have to have supervision for your employees. The supervision is really gonna be killer. I, I, a lot of times, if you're on a smaller job site, you guys will drop off your team, give them some direction and take off. And, and that is really going to be something that's going to be put more pressure on to stop going in the future with Cal OSHA. But in your warehouse, you got to make sure you're putting out team leaders there. Your supervisors understand what they should and should not be doing. That your supervisors really have a stomach for the supervision that they're looking to put in place. 
Yeah, so so as an EEAP client, we're able to help you with a lot of, of the elements to, to your safety program, but but you guys are really the ones that are there on the day-to-day -day basis yeah. and need to be able to provide that supervision. And and then, which leads us to the next point here, that's right. also is with the enforcement. And that's why I said your supervisors have to have the stomach, because enforcement is the next part. Now, what is the part of supervising that takes the most stomach? You supervisors out there, you got to grit up your loins, and you really got to have the stomach for enforcement. And a lot of times, you guys are like, "Yep, nope, I'm good with that. I can do it." But if if you got family or friends and your teams, you got to make sure they understand that your job's on the line just as well as theirs are to make sure we do the right thing and we protect the corporation. Without the companies we work for, we don't really have jobs, and it's hard to feed our families. And so we must protect the company. So on an enforcement side, I particularly like a three strikes you're out rule. But frankly, you can take whatever you'd like. A lot of people, when they have a, uh, a disciplinary program that is uh, that, that kind of escalates, which is obviously a, a good idea, they start out with the first one being something like a verbal warning. I've never really been a big fan of that. You can do what you'd like out there, but the verbal warnings happen more often than they probably should. So my logic is, and this is just a recommendation, you ban the verbal warnings and you go straight to a write-up. Because a lot of these supervisors out there, and you know you guys do this, you will suggest this. All right, I'm going to give you a verbal warning this time. All right, I'm going to give you a verbal warning this time. And you're going to do that two or three times because the second step that should be is just so hard for you to do that, that you just put it off. Some of you are shaking your heads, yep, that's us, and some of you shaking your heads, no, that's not us. So I just recommend if you're going to have a, a, a discipline policy that does escalate, uh, my recommendation is you just get rid of the verbal and just do we do a write-up for, for the very beginning. Two write-ups, three write-ups, heck, I don't even care if you have five write-ups, but you, you keep documenting the problems that you have with an employee. Yeah, it's really critical that that you need to be able to show that you're that you're holding employees accountable for those rules. Um, and and really, it's not, you know, once once you once you have a few examples, yep. people tend to to fall in line. It's not like everybody's going to continue to break the rules. It's more like when everybody sees that rules aren't enforced, then everyone's going to break the rules. Yeah, once they start getting verbals, it's all downhill from there. Ah, he'll just give you a verbal. He'll just give you a verbal. You you want to start with the write-ups. So then the next part is uh, identifying and correcting your hazards. This is going to be easy for you because you're a client of EAP and you're getting the quarterly inspections that we're doing for you. Now, the Cal OSHA code says that you have to identify, correct them, correct the hazards. That's what the code suggests. So in the reports, you'll notice that we're taking a picture and we're identifying the problem. And then we put an area on where you can abate it or put the date of abatement or the date of correcting the problem that you have there. Obviously, if you have a problem with your DI reports or your detailed inspection reports that we're creating for you, give us a call in the office. Ask for Sam, the general manager. He comes out at times to the places, individual job sites, but also you can talk to my team inside and uh, Cindy or Lori or any one of the, the people inside can help you out with that. So, so having record of this, of all of this taking place, is something that that's crucial for you, and that's why we provide the the DI reports to you in the manner that we do. For one, it's proof; it shows that that you're doing these inspections, you're finding the issues, and then once you sign off on the abatement, now you have proof that you're correcting the hazards. If if we're just walking around and pointing out things, and you're saying, "Yeah, I'll, I'll correct it," and you fix it, there's no proof that this is taking place. That is correct. That is. Correct. Correct. So the next thing is, is they expect you to have procedures for investigating injuries and illnesses in your company. Right. So injury, illnesses, investigations, procedures. You, there is a document inside the injury, illness, uh, the, the client login center called the 5020 form. It's under the tab called forms. Pretty simple. So if you go to there, you have, you have forms. It's, it's called the 5020 or the action investigation form. It's an actual a Cal OSHA document. You can fill that out. We put it online, and that has an interactive way, doesn't it, Rick, so that yes. you can fill that up there and then print it up for your guys. Uh, you should fill those things out within the 24 hours, very close to when the problem took place, so you can get all the important information and keep that on file. It, when it comes to reporting accidents to Cal OSHA, there is a tab right next to that that will that will go over what you need to do, what what is required to report. But for safe bet, just call us in the office. We'd love to go over that with you so that we can help you make that right choice. 
Okay, so these are the things that Cal OSHA expects of every business. So what? So whether as a client of EEAP we're assisting you with these things or whether someone that is doing it on their own, these are the things that they require that, that you're doing. So let's talk a little bit about the difference between being safe and being compliant. You know, we get a lot of times businesses will believe that because they haven't had any injuries, uh, they haven't had any serious accidents that's caused Cal OSHA to come out, or that they haven't had, uh, you know, even a random visit by Cal OSHA, that, that they're compliant. You know, or, or they'll think that because they know other people that are in their same industry and they don't have programs in place, they just don't think that they're required. And the fact is that, you know, if your safety programs do not meet those requirements and you're not doing those elements that we just talked about, um, you're at risk of getting some serious costly citations. Mm hmm yeah, you'll get these costly citations and this will be a, a dampering on your profitability with your company. And so you want to make sure that you're always make, you keeping in compliance with things. Now, the smart guys out there do realize that sometimes compliance doesn't actually mean safer. In, in some ways, it, you, their argument has been made multiple times that sometimes these laws make things a little bit harder to do our jobs. And they're not really intended to be that, but I know I've heard that argument thousands and thousands of times, and I have seen a couple examples that, of that exact circumstance. So I cannot disagree with it to a certain degree. But this is why you have us, so that we can come out and talk to you about how to hit the, the, the middle ground, an area where we can be in compliance, but also be safe. So if you do find that you're in one of those circumstances, you should ask your inspector when they're out there. This is one of those things that you keep telling me to do A, but if I do that, B, C, and D create a problem for us. What, what should we do? Let's have the debate. Exactly. And, and you know, you, you come into issues with things like machine guarding, where people will have guards on there that were provided by the manufacturer and and maybe they haven't had any problems with something like that so they think that you know that that they're fine but the the fact is that in California our standards are stricter than the rest of the country and chances are your machinery was not manufactured here and while it meets manufacturers recommendations doesn't meet California's just because your machine is been purchased in California doesn't mean it's up to code you could buy a machine at Lowe's that wasn't up to Cal OSHA code. Okay. So let's talk about how you avoid these citations. We talked about documentation. That's one of your required. These are all things that are that are required. So you got to make sure that that documentation and as an EAP client, we're keeping that up to date for you. That's on your client login center. And, and, and that stuff changes from time to time. New regulations come come uh, into play, uh, they, they decide to write new programs and implement new programs, and, and we keep those up to date for you. But otherwise, somebody has got to be keeping an eye out because you're not getting any kind of notification saying, hey, this new program is coming into effect, you better get on the ball. But that's why they have us, Rick, so that we can tell them of that program, and that's why being an EAP client is so good. Going to the training, we have talked about training quite a bit. So we did, but let's talk a little bit about, you know, the... the uh, the how often the training is done and for different industries that's a good that's a good point rick the training needs to be done at least monthly for most of the business in california let me make sure you understand why we get there the the, the, the all the california laws lean to this statement you must do regular training we have been to thousands of hearings we've been doing this over 24 years at eap and i promise you that you're never going to sit in a california hearing and suggest doing training once a year or two times a year or four times a year is enough training to be able to convince an OSHA uh, labor law judge or an OSHA judge uh, that you're doing an, a reasonable amount of training or regular training. All we've been able to prove in a hearing and the judges all agree is monthly training for most businesses. If you are construction or you have a job with a, a business with job sites, you build a product, a product and you install it and you go to places to install it, then you fall under a different requirement that has specific guidelines. And that specific guidelines are individually, you must do it every 10 business days. Some guys do it every Friday, some do it every other week, but the reality is it's every 10 business days. That is the requirement when it comes to training. So if you make sure that that training is being conducted, 
Um, you're keeping record of that so that you can prove that it's that it's happening. You're going to be able to avoid citations for sure. Um, the next part is is the inspections, and we talked about about doing those and documenting those. Now, in, you know, one of the things that you have, as Michael mentioned, that because we handle so many Cal OSHA citations every year that we're able to bring that perspective in. As you can imagine, there's so many different laws, Michael. There is, and, and, and these laws are being in, interpreted differently by the, the district managers, number one, and number two, the laws are being cho chosen to enforce sometimes and not chosen to be enforced sometimes. And so with EEAP, you just gotta know, we're watching all the citations in the state of California so that we can tell you what is being cited and in what area and what the district manager's general feelings are on this to help you out so that we can keep you up to date. This, this service is invaluable to you, and, and, and two, you, you just got to know that these inspections are going to save your bacon when it comes, when everything comes together. Again, the enforcement. We talked about the enforcement, and, and in doing that, I mean, you're, you're, you're going to be able to prove that you're enforcing the rules that you have, and you're also going to, as a result, you're going to have a safer workplace. You're going to have less accidents when you're making, when you're enforcing the rules and, and less cause for Cal OSHA to come out. I think there's a recommendation that, that, that we've received before from Cal OSHA that if you have supervisors that are failing to enforce the safety rules in their work areas or failing to enforce basic safety practices, these supervisors should be, should be written up to. And you just got to know that the, the, the supervisors got to be able to say to the employee, if I don't write you up, I'm going to be written up for not re re writing you up. And that chain of command and that the, 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 the bad stuff rolls downhill attitude really needs to be there to make sure your supervisors are doing the right things to protect the corporation, to protect the entity. So then... We also want to talk about reporting accidents. Now, we did a webinar here um, a few months ago about reporting accidents to Cal OSHA. So it's important that you you know the procedures for that when uh, a, uh, an incident meets the criteria that needs to be reported to Cal OSHA. And of course, you can always call us whenever you have an incident to make sure whether or not you need to make that call. That is a webinar in itself, isn't it, Rick? Yeah, we don't need to go too much into that. If you have questions, you can ask us or you can go on your client login center and you'll see second row dead center, a tab that says reporting accidents. You can go through that. And then also on your client center, you can see the webinar that we've done on that that is logged there, correct, Rick? Yes, you can watch all of our past webinars there. Then, of course, you want to make sure you're maintaining all of your, your permits that you need. you got a lot of permits out there. And so you have permits on your air compressor. You might have permits on your paint booth. There's just permits that you have. Now, when you need a permit on your air compressor, you just call Cal OSHA. They send some people out. Easy to do. They're easy to work with. They don't feel like you're going to get pounded by Cal OSHA. I've never seen Cal OSHA. When I've talked to the district managers or any circumstances, stand out for a air compressor permit and then you just got nailed with a bunch of citations with that being said uh, if you do have some issues with your uh, air your paint booth we've got a gentleman that we refer you to and and then that guy's name is Thomas Lau. Thomas Lau is the gentleman we refer people to when it comes to the EPA and AQMD stuff. And uh, if you need that, you just call us in the office and we'll give you his name and number. I think he is actually on our main website under links uh, under uh, the uh, AQMD and EEAP environmental uh, tab. You can see it under links, bottom right hand corner of our main website. Okay, the next thing is postings. Uh, making sure, you know, all of your fire extinguishers have uh, have signs above them. Uh, all of the postings of any kind of safety signage around your around your uh, facility. There, the the maps with the exit routes. We, we talked about that last month uh, with the emergency part of the emergency action plan. So you want to make sure that you have all of your postings. Uh huh. And um, then then we get down to the machine guarding. We talked a little bit about that. You want to make sure that your your guards are. are you know, properly uh, protecting your your employees. Rick, have we decided that with the next webinar we're going to do machine guarding? Yeah, with, in fact, that's next month. If uh, we will be doing a webinar on machine guarding, there's there's a lot of aspects to that. So we'll get into some more of the specifics with that. But generally, right now, let me just say that you do have to guard these machines in a proper way. And and just a reminder that just because it's a newer machine doesn't mean it's guarded correctly. Our inspectors are experts at this, and if they feel like they're unsure, I promise you they will say, "Hold on, I need to bring in my general manager for this." 
list, and you will not be charged for that second visit. We want to make sure we do it the right way the first time and give you the proper information. We'll do that webinar on machine guarding, but remember, don't assume that your machines are up to code just because they're new. That, that, that is a, that's a bad deal. And, and if you do have any that are, you know, that are uh, not in use that may not be compliant, you want to make sure that those are locked out and tagged out. Yeah, because even if they're not guarded, you, to make the argument later, you're right, Rick, that uh, the machine itself, oh, we don't use that. Calosha is going to be a flip of a coin if they're going to believe that or not, depending on the circumstance. You want to lock those tag outs out and then also put a sign on it that says not in use. Exactly. That way there's no, no disputing it. Then the last thing is, is... Uh, you, you really want to control your XMOD. Again, that's another webinar that we did about uh, about your XMOD. And, and so obviously there's multiple benefits to controlling your XMOD. Uh, you're going to lower your insurance premiums for sure. And you're going to give Cal OSHA one less reason to need to come out and visit you. Now, we've done a website on that one too, haven't we, Rick? Yeah, we did a website. So the that. XMOD uh, website you can see, Client Center, top center of the Client Center. You'll see a little tab that says Webinar and that'll have all the webinars inside your client center. Take a look at that. Talk to your workers' comp about your XMOD. This is big dollars out of your pocket, and you need to get control of that. So go ahead. If you've got any additional questions, go ahead and, and send that to us. Um, Just let me tell you this real quick. Sorry to interrupt you, Rick. If you need us to come out and you're not a client and you're one of the few that we've invited to come out just uh, to see us, just if you have any questions, just let us come out. We'd love to do a free on-site evaluation for anybody that's not a client of ours in California. Just let us just let us come out. We'd be glad to give you some free information. All right. Um, so we'll take some questions now. If you have any questions pertaining to this, we can help you. I'm looking here. Um, saw someone asking about if a verbal warning can be, if you can do a documented verbal warning. You know, you can do a documented verbal warning, but you can see that that really is called a write-up. If you're going to document something, I mean, what is really the definition of writing somebody up? You're, you're writing up a piece of paper suggesting we told this person not to do this. We warned them not to do it. So if you're asking, can you do a verbal write-up? A verbal write-up? Document the verbal write-up? Sure, that's called a write-up. Just write them up, you know. We write people up. and But a verbal is just saying, hey, you know, I, I didn't have that problem. I guess some people would even say, Rick, not to elongate this any longer than it needs to be, a verbal write-up is just me documenting it myself and not really having the employee sign it. Yes, and, exactly. And, and if that was the case, I'm not a big fan of those. Those are very, you know, people can say, no, you didn't. Yes, you did kind of thing. I would prefer just to have the employee that signed it all the time or acknowledge it or have a witness that they were warned about it. You got to make this legit so that we don't have a problem when the employee goes sideways. Right. Okay. Um, someone's asking here where they can get the 5020 forms. Once again, it's client center. You log on to the individual client center and we have it there under the forms tab on the second row dead center and you can see it there. If you have questions about that, call the office. Usually you'll get Jackie on the phone. She can give you some more information on that. Okay. Let's see here. It says, I do two safety meetings a month. Should I be sending you copies of our tests and paperwork? Well, you can send me copies of the sign-off sheets, and I can store those for you. The tests you can keep in their employee files, but it, it, what we're doing on the Client Login Center, we have a safety records tab that you can send in all of your safety records via fax or email, and once you start looking at that, it makes it easy. That way, you don't have to go through files and files in your filing cabinets, and it makes it also that if anything changes in-house, you have it in one spot on our Client Login Center. We can help it with, with you. We can send them out. To to you again we store them if an employee goes sideways over this department you just don't lose all records it keeps them in a nice safe spot so I do recommend you send those in okay uh, let's see here someone's asking how to get a hard copy of this info um, we do archive all of our webinars on our website so you can go there in your client center and again go to the webinar tab uh, this one will probably be posted by t uh, later this afternoon, but you can go there and uh, see the archive of all of them that we've done. Yep. Okay, let's see here. Uh, it says, where, where can I have 
where can I have a better idea of the documents needed? Well, a better how do you get a better idea of what the documents needed? What you do is you just ask us to come out. Sit down with you face to face. I could send you to the Calosha website and you can frankly go there, but after about 15 minutes, you'll want to pull your hair out and uh, die. So how do you get a better idea about the documents needed? You say, you know what, I need a visit from either from, from Sam, our general manager, to go over that. Or you call the office and you say, listen, I need Michael Crawley to come out. And I will come out personally if he needs be. Uh, to go over that if there really is a question. Or to make it simple, you can call the office and talk to my uh, our, our, our person over defense, Cindy. She is excellent over that, and that would be an even a great one to save you even more time. Just call and ask Cindy. Would love to go over that information with you. Okay, next question. How many tailgate meetings is required for general industry? For general industry, tailgate meetings are not necessarily required unless you have a job site. If you have a job site in general industry, then you need to have these tailgates. Remember, the law is really based around construction, agriculture, those kinds of things. But you would fall into that in general industry if you had remote job sites. You would fall in to do that, and that would be every 10 business days. That's it. That looks like all the questions that we have right now. Um, if any come in after we sign off, we can uh, contact you. Feel free to call us here at our 800 number if you do have any additional questions. Um, as a reminder, next month we will be doing the machine guarding webinar. We'll send you out notification of that uh, of a little bit prior. And Michael, do you have any closing comments here before we sign off? Let me just tell you that we're grateful that you're clients of EAP. We're doing everything in our power to make this a better service, and really we focus on not raising the prices at all as much as possible. This new mobile uh, mobile website coming out is going to really help you do this training that you need to be doing. It's going to change the way you view EAP to a certain degree for the positive, and I'm really making it so that we don't have to charge you any more for it, and I just want to tell you that I'm grateful to have you as clients, and thank you for all you do. Thank you. Um, I One real quick uh, question just came in. We'll make this our last question and then we'll sign off. Are safety committees mandatory? And that is a good question. Safety committees are not mandatory. Let me make that clear. Safety committees are not mandatory. Are they a good idea? Sure they are, but they are not mandatory. There are two ways that you can run a safety program in a company. One is called the key man program where one person is responsible and uh, he delegates the tasks from that like a committee. And then another way is to be able to build a committee and name all the members of the committee. On a defensive standpoint, the committee system is very difficult to, to prove a number of things on that I can answer more questions later. But the reality of it is you can do the key man process by naming one person responsible and still have a safety committee, but your program is all built around a key man. And then you can have the safety committee on the side and do all the things that the safety committee does. So safety committees are not, re are not required, but uh, they're not a bad idea to get a good consensus about what things are going on out there. Okay. Um Someone was just asking about how often a fire evacuation plan should be practiced. We we talked about that in last month's webinar. You can you can go to that and uh, and check. But uh, there there's no set amount of how often that should be done. There isn't. There isn't a once a year or once every five years. You know, there's not even a requirement that you have the evacuation. But it's a good idea to say, listen. This is the meeting spot. We're going to go out there. Let's do a fire evacuation. Some people just have simple offices, and it seems easy just to go go there. Some of you have more complex issues. You can refer to your inspector when they're out there on their feelings on that when, when you're talking about that. All right, folks. Thanks so much for attending. And again, thanks for being a client of EEAP. We will see you next month, and stay safe out there. Thank you.